Hello, hello, family. How are y'all doing? Hopefully everyone's doing well. You can see me well. Let me close these up. Doors back here. Family, what's going on? Let me see. I can't see anybody. Hello, family. Can y'all hear me and see me well? Please drop in the chat if you can hear me and see me well. Hello, Terrell. Hi, Simone. Hi, family. How y'all doing? I apologize if you were not able to get in on the initial. Hi, Dawn. Bethany, Gabriella, I apologize if you were not able to get in on the initial meal prep training. Uh, there were some issues with the link. I truly apologize about that, but y'all know I won't leave you hanging. Um, we won't, I won't keep you too long. It's very, very simple training. Um, if you've been one of my students before, you know that um, I give you the tools and it's up to you to implement those tools in your life because one thing I don't want to do is give you guys a bunch of recipes and you're like, okay, I'm tired of using this. Now, how do I create my own recipes, right? So basically what I'll be doing this evening is giving you guys the basic tools that I use to create meal plans for myself and for my family. Um, and remember, this is very, very basic. I'm, I mean, you don't understand how to eat properly. That's what we're going to be going over today. Um, obviously, when we get into health issues, it gets a little bit more complicated. Uh, but tonight, we're going to focus on how to create uh, basic meal plans. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me bring up. How are y'all feeling tonight? Let me know in the chat how you're feeling. How is everyone feeling? If you have any questions, by the way, you can drop them in the chat as well. And I will gladly answer them. The training is about 30 minutes. It's not that long. Um, hopefully you all got a chance to review as well. The recorded training that I sent via email. Hopefully, everybody got a chance to do that. Um, if you did, great. If you didn't, please go back and watch that because it'll help you with, uh, you know, collaborate the information that you have here with the information that you guys have in the training. It'll just, you know, just be more information that you can utilize um, on your daily journey. Um, but I'm super proud of everybody. I'm so happy. Um, for everyone that has supported Surviving Vegan, by the Cooking Guide, the Detox, becoming a student, I truly, truly appreciate each and every one of you. Okay, so let's get started. Screen share. There we go. Okay. All right, so Surviving Vegan Meal Prep Masterclass. Uh, this is a basic foundational principle uh, when it comes to eating. We're going to go over a few questions and answers at the end. Uh, so if you get any questions throughout this training, just put it in the comment section and I'll be sure to go over them. It's not that many of us tonight, so that's a good thing. I can actually answer as many questions as possible. All right, so it's about making meal prep master class. I do want to go over the food pyramid. If you've been on any of my trainings, I always go over this. If we met in person at a training, I always go over this. Um, I call it the surviving vegan food pyramid because that pyramid that we learned in school, incorrectly combining foods, obviously we know they you know, promoted that we should eat meat. And we have seen over the last decade how um, drastic meat has been in the deterioration of our health, okay? Um, both issues that we have today from cancer to high blood pressure, diabetes, um, pretty much all acid-based illnesses, like I just named, cancer, high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, all of these are acid-based illnesses come from making our blood too acidic, okay? So we want to aim for our body to be balanced. Alkalinity and acidity needs to be balanced, okay? So anytime you're working in poor health or fail health, you're most likely making your blood more acidic, all right? So poor health at the bottom of the pyramid, we have meat eaters and pescatarians, okay? You cannot be any healthier than the animal that you eat, okay? So if you're eating pigs, if you're eating cows, if you're eating um, chicken, fish, okay, especially if it's farm-raised, grown with uh, antibiotics or fed antibiotics, 
um, eating GMO corn as their feed, you cannot be healthier than the animal that you're eating. Okay, so if you're eating farm-raised food, you're in the, the bottom right now, okay? You have poor health. Um, obviously, it does get a little bit better when you start to eat organic uh, foods, um, when you start to eat uh, what they call kosher meat, uh, but at the end of the day, it's still flesh of another animal that is decaying and is dead, right? So the main point of us eating is to feed ourselves. When your body breaks down the, the food into a liquid, okay, into the smallest molecules, it is to feed your cells, all right? So what are you feeding your cells? That's what you should be thinking with every meal. What am I truly feeding my cells? Okay, not only are we eating the farm-raised fish and the farm-raised uh, pig and all these other things, but we put other chemicals on the food in the form of, um, what's the name of the seasoning that all of our parents and everything used? Um, complete seasoning, okay? Full of monosodium glutamate, which is a preservative, okay? Synthetic preservative, okay? We're eating the Mr. and Mrs. Dash. I believe that's what it's called. All of these seasonings have chemicals. So we're adding chemicals to our food, which is already farm-raised, already raised with chemicals and fed GMO foods. So if you're eating and falling in that category, you're in poor health, okay? Health is very simple. Either you're healthy or you're not. There is no in-between, okay? Just like if you're pregnant for nine months, you don't wake up one day and then all of a sudden you're not pregnant anymore if you didn't have the baby, right? So what I'm saying is either you're pregnant or you're not, either you're uh, you know, dealing with cancer or you're not, there is no such thing as cancer is in remission. That is like one of the biggest <laughs> irresponsible things to say okay either you have cancer or you do not which one is it okay same thing with your health either you are healthy or you're not so what is the body trying to tell you uh, as we move closer to the peak of the pyramid we go up to uh, different levels of health so vegan vegetarian is in fair health okay uh, vegetarians still eat foods that are produced by animals or any secretion of an animal, such as dairy and cheese. Dairy and cheese products are one of the most processed foods on the planet, okay? Along with meat, one of the most processed foods of a planet. They are taking the secretions of an animal and turning it into a food, okay? But remember, it cannot be any healthier than the host. Just like a mother's milk cannot be healthier than the actual mom, okay? So when we eat cheeses, when we eat dairy products, yogurts, and things of such, it can lead to a destruction of the digestive system, okay? Because it causes inflammatory responses, okay? Which lead to acne, which lead to IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, okay? Which leads to thyroid problems, all these other problems, okay? And a lot of the dairy milks and cheeses and things like that have synthetic hormones within them. So we're just basically trashing our lymphatic system, trashing our um, digestive system as well, right? So we go on to vegan. Now, vegan can be fair health or good health. And I say this because vegan five years ago when I first went vegan is not the same vegan that it is today, right? So now we have Beyond Meat, we have... Uh, all these fake meats and they are just that fake filled with chemicals okay that trashes your lymphatic system the lymphatic system's job is to filter waste through the body but think about this okay if we're feeding our body chemicals with every meal whether it be in the form of putting complete seasoning on our food whether it's in the form of actually eating fake meats or if it's in the form of eating flesh of an animal that was raised on artificial foods, GMO corn and stuff like that, it becomes a part of us, all right? And the body's going to do what it can to cleanse itself. You know, a lot of people say, oh, um, how can I get away from mucus? I want to cleanse my body of mucus. Mucus is not the problem. Mucus is a sign that your body's trying to cleanse itself. So if your children or yourself, okay, you're dealing with the overproduction of mucus, phlegm in the throat or in the body, that's the body trying to cleanse itself. That's how the body removes waste. So if you're dealing with that overproduction of mucus, then you got to look at what toxins or chemicals or synthetic chemicals that I'm absorbing. It's in everything from candy. When you read the ingredients and you see that it has red color this or red dye and red number 40, red number 60, blue number, all these different things are synthetic, artificial 
foods. They're not real. What's going to happen if you put water in your gas tank? It's not real gas, right? Your car's going to break down. Same thing with these synthetic chemicals that we feed ourselves. They make it look pretty, okay? But it's very harmful when it comes to uh, digestion and how it impacts the body. Okay, so we move further up. We, we go start with plant-based. I highly recommend that even if you have no desire to be 100% plant-based, go you know, a few meals throughout the week or throughout the day without any meat. Do that for your body because the less stress you put on your body, the better it will be to, to you. Okay, so plant-based is eating only things that are made from Mother Earth. Okay, no synthetic foods, no dyes, things of that. Okay, it's only foods that are made from Mother Father Earth. All right, then we go into optimal health, which is liquid raw vegan, raw vegan or alkaline vegan. And alkaline vegan, is, you've seen me talk about this, you've heard me say this before. Um, alkaline vegan to, in today's society is a great thing and a great diet to follow if you understand what you're doing. Okay, remember what I said earlier, it's about the balance between acid and alkaline. It's not just about being alkaline because guess what? There are acidic functions within the body. And I know our great ancestor, Dr. Savi, has done so many wonderful things in our community and I pour my, my libations to him. Uh, what, what we fail to realize because we're not doing the research is we need acid just as much as we need alkalinity. But what Dr. Savi was talking about is meat, cheese, dairy products, fish, all of these things make you more acidic. Not acidic foods, okay, such as limes, pineapples, grapefruits. Those do not make you more acidic. So some people stay away from those foods when actually it would do, you know, a great justice to their body and their digestive system. Uh, so because we're mostly on the standard American diet here in Western civilization, alkalinity is the way to go because mostly 99% of our diet, if you go to the grocery store today, you know, I'm talking about the commercial grocery stores, 99% of the things in that store will make you more acidic outside of the produce section. 99% of the things in every aisle will make you more acidic, okay? So yes, by the time you're 70, 75, 60, 50, your body starts to shut down, okay? So liquid raw, raw, and alkaline in today's society will be optimum health, okay? If you're already on a plant-based, start incorporating alkaline meals. 80% of your meals should be alkaline, 20% um, acidic, but I'm not talking about acid forming. I'm talking about things that actually buffer the acidity out of the body. Okay, so here's what you will learn. How to combine foods, we're gonna go over that again. How to gain weight as a vegan. Um, a lot of people ask me about that. Easy recipes for children, I'm gonna give you formulas, okay? How to create 30 minute meals, I'm gonna give you simple formulas um, and easy vegan snacks, how to create those. Okay, so meal pairing for fruit. Take a screenshot of this if you don't already have it. I know a few of you have been in some of my classes and trainings, so the more you hear this, the more you'll uh, be accustomed to actually following it. So I'm glad that this is your 18th time hearing me say this. Uh, but sweet fruits, we have bananas, dates, raisins, and dried fruits. Sweet fruits should only be eaten with sweet fruits, okay? You gotta know this. You gotta retrain your mind. You have to unlearn and relearn, okay? Watermelon, cantaloupe, honeydew, those are melons. High water content, they digest fast. So you want to eat those by themselves, okay? Subacidic fruits, apples, berries, mangoes, peach, cherry, pears, they can be eaten alone, or you can pair those with acidic fruits, such as grapefruit, lemon, lime, kiwi, tangerine, strawberry, cranberry, pineapple. Now, the good thing about the acidic fruits is they are really, really good, number one, colon cleansers, because usually acidic fruits are high in fiber, and we're going to go over how to create a cleanse in a second, but usually acidic fruits are high in fiber, and they're really, really good at buffering the acid in the blood, okay? So if you were to do a pH test and you found out that you were too acidic or overly acidic, you can go ahead and make uh, detox drinks every morning from um, acid-based fruits, such as grapefruit, lemon, lime. They will make your body more alkaline. Okay, so we don't want to totally omit those drinks. Even cranberry juice, fresh cranberry juice is really, really good for all lower organ problems, such as reproductive problems, kidney problems, okay, uterine problems, so uh, prostate problems as well. So 
if you know anything about uh, what they call the chakras, which is really just melanin centers in the body, if you know anything about you know chakras, usually the way the ancients did it was they correlated the colors of the chakra with the colors of the food. So cherries and cranberries are red. So that is usually good for the lower organs of the body because the um, the the which, which chakra is at the bottom? I can't remember the name of it right now. I think it's not the sacred chakra. Is it sacred? I think it's the sacred chakra. Yeah, the sacred chakra is red. Right, so kiwi, sorry, not kiwi, cranberry and cherries will cleanse that area. The organs that are related to the sacred chakra are the sex organs, okay? So if you eat these or drink these uh, different types of berries, you can cleanse those areas. So it's not about, you know, what I want you guys to realize is it seems like it's so much to learn, but when you understand what the message is, it's easier for you to get it. Okay, when you make your detox drinks, don't blend it with milk or anything like that because fruits only should be paired with fruits. You want to eat fruits with fruits. Okay, so if you're making your detox drinks, you don't want to use almond milk because that's protein and fats, right? So we don't mix fruit with proteins and fats. You mix fruit only with fruit. So you can make a, a smoothie drink, but you make it with water, distilled water, or even coconut water, okay? But don't do that often, okay? Don't do the coconut water often. If you make it with coconut water, it's not a detox drink. It's a treat at, this, at that point, okay? Um, when you're making your detox drinks as well, or you're making your fruit bowls, no more than four different types of fruit in one bowl. So you can do, let's say we did apple, pears, grapefruit, and strawberry. That's four fruit, that's enough, okay? All right, so let's talk about other foods. We have protein, starches, vegetables, fats, meats, and seafoods. Proteins, of course, I'm going to be talking about plant-based proteins. Uh, plant-based proteins such as nuts, hemp seeds, all seeds, beans, bean sprouts, those are great sources of plant-based protein. Okay, um, for those who don't know, you can find out how much protein you need per day by multiplying your weight times 0.32. Okay, 0.32. Weight times 0.32. That tells you how many pro, how much protein you need in grams per day. So proteins only pair well with low starch, non-starch vegetables such as leafy greens, cabbage, kale, peppers, onions, zucchini, squash, things of that nature. Uh, basically, we're pairing a complex food with a non-complex food. All right. So if you ever notice, you might eat beans and uh, rice, right? You may eat beans and rice. That might cause you to have that fatigue feeling after you eat, better known as the itis, okay? That means you're putting two complex foods in one dish, putting stress on the digestive system, okay? So start to pay attention to how your body reacts to food. You're in control of your vessel, so you have to start listening to your vessel, okay? When you get your smoothie, maybe you are a person that get a smoothie and you just mix all type of things in there. You'll notice after you eat that smoothie, maybe 30 minutes, you'll feel a little small cramps in your belly. The body's trying to tell you I'm going through stress from digesting your food, okay? Uh, so pay attention to that. When you're eating starches, such as yams, carrots, rice, I particularly would prefer you to eat quinoa versus like white rice, especially, or brown rice. You can you know, lean more towards quinoa because it's more nutritionally dense, um, as well as um, there's less uh, chemicals in the processing of quinoa. All right, so I would rather you eat that. Um, other starches, instead of white potato, you can do yams. Now, I understand when we go to our little festive events, we might have some white potatoes, but don't eat that like on the regular, right? Um, swap it out for yams. They even have white yams, which is sweet, but you know, it's an alternative as well. Um, pretty much you will pair those with low starch and non-starch vegetables, dark leafy greens. Um, now, when you start to create your meal plans, this is what you will use, okay? Don't just put food together in the bowl and be like, oh, I'm gonna prep for seven days, no, okay? You have to use the meal pairing and take screenshots of this. If you need me to go back over this later, I can. But take screenshots of this and you use your meal pairing to construct your meal. Right, so I told you no more than four meals, four foods in one meal. So this cuts down on the digestive problems. This cuts down on the inflammation, the bloating, the weight gain. When you portion your foods this way, it's not so much about how much you eat it, right? 
if you're eating plant-based. It's about how you're eating it as well, okay? So as you make your foods and you make your um, meal plans, you want to make sure you're following meal pairing. Hold on one second, man. No baby prince can't live without me. Um, okay, so no more than four meals in one bowl. When you're prepping, you decide, okay, if I want to eat a protein, when you look at beans, when you look at black beans, you may notice that black beans, for example, let me actually bring it up. I like to show instead of just uh, saying. I'm going to show you guys. Uh, I know you probably can't see this. I'll show you in a second. I'm going to show you guys. Because you'll get some foods like I have uh, protein should only be paired with low starch, non starch vegetables. But when you look at black beans, for example, it will contain protein, starch, and fat. So, how do I pair that, Arisha? Let's talk about it, okay? Okay, so I want you guys to see this. I'm gonna share this with you guys. Okay, focus on this right here. I'm gonna just pull up one of the nutritional labels right here. Can you guys see this? Now I'm just finding this on the web for the sake of the example. All right, so if you see this label right here, this is for black beans, all right? It says black beans has one gram fat. It says black beans have 41 grams carbohydrates and then 15 grams protein. So you might be like, oh my God, I know what Risha told me. Protein is only supposed to pair with low starch, no starch vegetable. But what is this classified as? What is this? Black beans has all three, fats, protein, and carbohydrates. You want to look at what the bean or whatever food you're eating has the most of, okay? What does it have the most of? So one serving based on this nutritional fat is mostly carbohydrates. So you would um, consider this as a carbohydrate. This serving size is a carbohydrate. All right, so because it also contains protein, you can add more protein to this meal, but not a lot, okay? That's when it becomes overbearing. So if you're plant-based or vegan, you're creating your meal plans, depending on what you're doing. If you're eating a lot of beans, okay, we're going to consider that a carbohydrate based on this example. We're going to consider that a carbohydrate, and if you want to add some more protein to it, you can, but not a lot, okay? Not a lot. And you go off of how your body reacts from how you eat. And you'll be like, okay, my body got a little crampy after I ate all those, that uh, protein with that carb. So I won't do that next time. I'll just go ahead and eat it with a dark leafy green. But most foods, especially beans and nuts and seeds, are what we call complete nutrients. So they will contain protein, carbs, and fat. All right? But you, would go, you have to do the work, especially if you're planning on a meal plan. You have to go do the work. And you have to look at the nutritional facts of the food and see what it is categorized as, okay? We are categorizing it based on how many grams of each it has. If this had 40 grams of fat and one gram of carbohydrate, I would list this as a fat, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, yes, thank you, sis. Root chakra, I said the wrong thing. Thank you, sis. So let's go back to this now. Okay, so if it was mostly fats, we would classify it as fats. But as you see to the bottom right, fats should only be eaten with leafy vegetables. So if it was mostly classified as a fat, I wouldn't even add starch or protein with it. I would just eat it with a leafy vegetable, okay? Proteins are best paired with low starch, non starch vegetables. Starches are best paired with low starch, non starch vegetables. Fats should only be eaten with leafy greens. Meats and seafoods, because they have um, a higher digestion time, they should be eaten without anything else. Ideally, nothing else, okay? But we haven't been trained like that, and that's why we're dealing with bloating, and that's why we're dealing with irritable bowel syndrome. The body is trying to tell you something. If, the, if you are getting... If you are dealing with chronic inflammation, 
That means you're either eating toxins, which causes an inflammatory response, or you're putting the body through stress. That's it. Now you got to figure out what's causing the stress. Okay. Okay, so circadian rhythm. Basic, basic principle tells you when to eat. Okay, you detox in the morning time. Wake up in the morning, get to your detoxing. Okay, 4 a.m. to 12 p.m., you detox in the morning. Detox using your fruit juices or your vegetable juices. Don't mix them together. Okay. In the afternoon, after 12 p.m., 12 to 8, that's when you can start eating your carbs, protein, and fat. So when you're creating your meal plan, if you've ever done any of my detoxes, you'll see all morning I have you doing uh, juices in the morning time. And then as the day progresses, after 12 p.m., you can eat your carbs, protein, and fat, but you have to pair them correctly. All right? So all of this tells you how to build your meal plan. We got the meal pairing, which tells you how to put the actual meals together. Okay, then we have circadian rhythm, which tells you how to organize your meals. Okay, so now we learn how to put the meals together. We use circadian rhythm to organize the meals. So from 4 a.m. to 12 p.m., we're doing our detox drinks. Okay, so you'll look at the fruit chart. You can put your fruit juices together, or you can do vegetable juices. Okay. After 8 p.m., you want to go back into detox, and it's time to rest, okay? Different organs detox at different times, okay? So it's imperative that you get your rest, like seriously, okay? Because if you're up 3 a.m. when the liver is detoxing, you don't get the full effect of the rejuvenating process of detoxing, okay? So from 8 p.m. up until 4 a.m., is your rest time and you can still detox you know i don't want you to think that after eight o'clock you cannot eat if your body is you know hungry if you're hungry or you're having hunger pains eat something but don't eat a steak don't eat you know a bean burrito eat low starch non-starch vegetables a salad okay or a fruit bowl or a vegetable bowl or a tea whatever you feel like doing uh, but just don't go for carbs, protein, and fats, heavy carbs, protein, and fat, because that will lead to weight gain, and that's what leads to a lot of sleep pattern issues, okay? Because you eat all these heavy foods, and guess what? Just because you're sleeping, your body still has to wait, work to uh, break down these foods. So you want to make sure that you're eating your complex foods higher in the day, all right? And then if you're hungry, you're eating the less complex foods, usually foods that are high in water content, such as watermelon, cantaloupe, leafy greens, things that are digest faster after eight o'clock, okay? So again, meal pairing tells you how to construct the meals. Circadian rhythm tells you how to organize your meals. All right, so creating detox drinks. I wanna talk about this for a little while because some of you might say, okay, it sounds good to create these detox drinks. But how do I create them? You have to understand your purpose for detoxing. Um, somebody, I want to be a little interactive right now. Somebody in the comments, tell me some issue, if you don't mind sharing, that you're dealing with that you want to understand how to detox. Um, so any issue, you could just... Okay, so diabetes was put in uh, first, Okay. So, okay, diabetes, acid reflux, uh, Crohn's disease, restless leg syndrome, yeast infections, fatty liver. Okay, so most of the issues that you all wrote in the comments, leaky gut, hypertension, candida, all of those, you would detox. Remember, I, okay, let me back up a little bit. All of these issues that you gave me, number one, have to do with having an over acidic body. I just want to let you know that. When you detox, you have to realize what is my purpose, okay? You either have one or two purposes when you're detoxing. Either you're trying to stimulate the body to perform an action or you're trying to stabilize the body. All of the issues that you gave me from diabetes to acid reflux, Crohn's disease, you're not trying to stimulate the body to do an action, okay? You're trying to stabilize the body. Your body's destabilized in the dis-ease state, okay? Not disease, dis-ease. It's not at ease with itself. So you want to stabilize the body. So if you want to stabilize the body, you will go with vegetables. Even if you know nothing about what the vegetable does and how, it, how you want to use it, automatically you go towards vegetables. Now, if somebody in here wanted to lose weight, okay, or somebody wanted a flatter stomach, you will go with fruits because fruits stimulate an action in the body. All right, so I'm going to stick with 
uh, vegetables because most of you uh, want to stabilize your body. All right, so with that being said, when you wake up in the morning, you're going with your dark leafy greens. Leafy greens are the easiest to stabilize the body. I'm talking about spirulina, okay? I'm talking about chlorophyll, okay? I'm talking about spinach, okay? All of these stabilize the body. Celery juice, those are things you can start doing right now. And remember, one vegetable is multi-purpose, okay? It has multi multiple uses, okay? So all of those from candida, hypertension, leaky gut, you need to stabilize your body so you will go with greens, okay? You will go with greens. Obviously, with candida, hypertension, I believe I saw diabetes, you should know that you want to go with greens because guess what? With all those issues, they feed off of sugar, right? They feed off of sugar. Sugar is found in fruits, natural sugar, but it's found in fruits, right? So less sugar is found in greens. I'm just helping you guys to, uh, to see the correlation between this. Okay, so you will go with greens for all of the issues that you all are dealing with. Okay, for kidney, you want to look at a uh, cucumber, even though cucumber is technically a fruit, but it's really, really good for rehydrating the uh, kidneys. So usually people that deal with kidney problems, it started with dehydration, okay? A buildup of toxins in the body. Remember what I said, the way we eat it, we go back, we go back to um, this food pyramid right here. Remember I said the poor health and the fair health? What is the body, what does that mean? The body is trying to rid itself of toxins through the lymphatic system, through the endocrine system, through the urinary system. This is how the body removes waste. That's what I said, the, the, the mucus is not bad. The body removes waste through mucus, through urine, through feces, and through the pores. That's why we get acne, right? The body's trying to expel the waste. But if we don't know what the body's saying, we just like go get some cosmetic project, uh, products and put on our face or you know go do something ridiculous and do it to our body not realizing the body's trying to say hey i need help so the end result of that can be kidney disease because guess what you have destroyed the lymphatic system so now we want to rejuvenate it so we want to go towards the greens greens are alkaline right meaning building up so with all of the issues that you guys left in the chat you need to be building the system up Greens build the system up, have an alkaline effect on the body, okay? Even green fruits do the same thing. So I'm talking about uh, green grapes, even though you can barely find any that seeded, but green grapes, uh, pears, um, obviously if you have diabetes or candida, I don't want you to use that, but hypertension and things like that, you can use the green vegetables, you can use the green uh, fruits as well. Green always stabilizes the body. Okay, but you cannot go wrong by introducing spirulina. Um, you can also introduce things like activated charcoal, okay, especially for the uh, person that's dealing with the candida. You can introduce things like activated charcoal to help reduce the toxins in the body, um, even with the kidney issues as well, all right? Um, I don't know how severe it is, but you can start with a little teaspoon and warm water before bed to help the body absorb uh the actual chemicals in the blood uh, and th this happens over time it's years of improperly eating right okay so when you wake up in the morning what is your goal for detoxing that tells you what fruit or what vegetable you want to use okay so if you're stimulating the action you will go with fruits if you're stabilizing the body you will go with veggies if you want to uh, actually reverse a problem fruits and vegetables are not going to be enough okay so like for example kidney disease right you want to reverse an issue you're going to go with herbs and teachers um depending on how severe it is we can break down herbs as well okay Herbs come in the form of teas, which everybody knows about, tinctures, okay, and supplements. If you are in a more severe or chronic issue, you want to go with tinctures. You want to go with supplements versus a tea. Tea is going to take too long, right? Somebody has, you know, stage three prostate cancer, a tea is going to take way too long. All right, so we want to go with a tincture or herb. Um, for kidney disease, you can look at th into things such as motherwort, 
Okay, that's a really, really good herb. Um, horsetail as well is really, really good herbs for that. Uh, but that's basically how you decide what you want to use. Fruits stimulate action, veggies stabilize the body, herbs correct, herbs and supplements correct issues. Okay, natural colon cleanse formula. Okay, it's impossible to have uh, optimal health if our colon is filled with junk and waste. How does waste get trapped in the colon? By improperly pairing our foods, which causes putrefaction in the colon, okay? Um, by not eating enough fiber, usually those in the poor, in the fair health, are not getting enough fiber in their diet, okay? So we definitely wanna eat high fiber fruits. Blending them is the best option versus juicing your uh, vegetables and herbs, sorry, vegetables and fruits, because juicing removes the fiber. So you wanna go with blending them, Okay, if you have to stabilize the body, right? We're not going for the fruit, but if you want to stabilize the body, we can get high fiber uh, vegetables, such as uh, broccoli, really, really good and high in fiber, such as um, spirulina, high in fiber, mix that with some kale, blend it up, you will see that foam at the top, drink it, drink two or three an hour, you know, 16 to 18 ounces, two to three times an hour. Um, you go off of how your body responds. Now, it's not a chemical, so it's not like you're going to drink it and in five minutes you're going to go, oh my God, go to the bathroom. No, it's going to take time. So give yourself like a day or two for your body to adjust to the fiber, okay? So when you are doing your natural colon cleanse, you want to basically do high fiber fruits or vegetables, okay, with distilled or spring water. This is a formula that you can use. You just plug it in. Okay, high fiber fruits or vegetables, distilled water or spring water, okay, plus enemas. We should be doing an enema at least once a week, okay, depending on how chronic your issues are. Like if you're not going to the bathroom, you want to start with once a week, okay, but you know, bi weekly is a good uh, starting point for doing enemas. Um, make your own enemas. Don't buy the enemas out the store. I know they got the fleet bottle for a dollar, but most of that is chemicals. You can buy that bottle, but rinse it out, okay? You can put uh, distilled water, warm distilled water with olive oil and lemon juice. That's enough for your enema to cleanse the colon. Okay, you will lay on your left side. You can use shea butter or you can use aloe gel, aloe vera gel as the lubricant. Um, I know some people like to shy away from the enema, but trust me, you need it, okay? You need it. A lot of the toxic waste prohibits our body from absorbing minerals, okay? So a lot of the issues we have, even if we take these herbs and supplements, the body may not absorb them properly because of all the waste lying in the colon. So I know we get a little like, you know, fidgety when it's time to do the enema, but it's, you need it, okay? You definitely need it to make sure the colon is clear and you're able to absorb the minerals that you're taking, okay? Um, so natural colon cleanse, again, formula is high fiber, low fiber, sorry, high fiber fruit or vegetables plus distilled water or spring water, okay, plus an enema, self-made, homemade enema. So what does that look like in a day? Okay, so say for instance, you um, have never done a detox and you want to eventually heal yourself of kidney issues. You want to start with a colon cleanse. This is how your meal plan should be built out. You want to start with the natural colon cleanse because guess what? If your colon is lined with feces that basically turns into slime in the colon and it gets hard, you're not going to absorb the herbs anyway. Okay? You want to do the colon cleanse first. You use the formula. Use meal pairing to put together your meals. Okay? You can do liquids and solids. So you're doing high fiber liquids and solids. Okay, make sure you're getting a gallon of water, okay, in per day on your detox. And don't do this detox more than five to 10 days, okay? Okay, don't do this detox more than five to 10 days. Gallon of water, and then you're doing that enema once per week to flush the colon. Very important that if you're going to be drinking a gallon of water per day, you at least have to implement um, electrolytes in your meal plan, 
If you start to eat fruit, that's okay. If you're going to be getting your electrolytes. But if you're going to be doing vegetables, at least uh, drink some coconut water during the day, fresh out the coconut if you can find it. If you cannot find it fresh out the coconut, don't buy that stuff on the shelf that's in the cans. Leave it alone. I'd rather you get uh, fresh fruits and blend them up and drink that, and that'll be your antioxidant. Um, antioxidants and electrolytes, such as berries, you know, strawberries, raspberry, blueberries, those are the easiest ways to get your electrolytes. Okay, if you can't get it from coconut water. So you build your meal plan out, um, especially if you're starting to uh, build your meal plan for the purpose of reversing issues. You want to start with the colon cleanse first. Use the colon cleanse formula for like a week. Okay, what is the colon cleanse formula? High fiber fruits or vegetables plus the water, distill the spring plus an enema. Okay, once per week. You do that for five to 10 days. Okay, you use, you're like, oh my God, I gotta do the low, I gotta do, look at saying low. You gotta do the high fiber fruits and vegetables. How do I know, you know what to create? Use your meal pairing to make the correct pairings. Okay, don't overthink it. Don't overthink this, right? Don't overthink it. It's not gonna be perfect, but I'm not gonna put too much on you right now, okay? I'm not gonna put too much on you right now. I just want you to focus on getting the basics down, okay? Anybody have any questions on that? Because I'm, I'm gonna have you do a quick little assignment real quick. Any questions? Stage for King Boom Bags are also clear. No hot favorite. Anybody have any questions? Anybody have any questions? Okay, so far, okay. So what I want you all to do is take three minutes, three to five minutes, and put together everybody in here uh, that wrote a issue. I told you all that you need to balance your body, so you want to be doing vegetables. I want you to put together two detoxes for me, okay, using the information that we just learned. High fiber vegetables, is, I'm giving you guys a hint. You guys are gonna go with high fiber vegetables, okay? So put together two detoxes for me. One detox drink and one detox meal that's high in fiber. High in fiber, write it down or you can write it in the chat. High fiber detox drink. Anybody lost on that? High fiber detox drink using greens. All you have to do, if you don't know what to do. Now, uh, would you juice that celery or would you blend the celery? I like that Carolyn Spirulina drink. Yes, absolutely. You will blend it. Blend it. Absolutely. Because blending keeps the fiber. And you guys are going to get this recording. I know this might be new information or a lot of information at one time. You guys want to get this recording. No worries. Yes, beet green, celery, and kale. A lot of fiber. I love it. I love it. Love it. Big green, celery, and kale, yes. So you kept it with three ingredients, no more than four ingredients. Okay, so that's great. Three ingredients, beet green, celery, and kale for the drink, that's absolutely fine, that's great. Now look, uh, that's Adrian, right? Adrian, Adrian, yes, let me see if you answered. Now look, Adrian, let, now you just threw that out there, right, Adrian? Let me show you how you know more than you think you know. You just threw it out there. Let me just do a Google search, right? You told me that you wanted, um, you know, help with hypertension, right? Let's let's look at this. Hypertension. Hypertension. 
You said beet greens. Let's just do a quick Google search. You know, this is a quick, quick Google. Beet greens for hypertension. Let's see what comes up. Look at this. And this is WebMD, right? If, you have, if you've been in my class, you know how I feel about Googling, but let's look at this. This is just, you know, you having very common knowledge, right? From WebMD. It says the nitric oxide then relaxes blood vessels and dilates them, which helps the blood flow more easily and lowers blood pressure. Hello, you just threw that out there. But because I'm teaching you to go with greens, okay, because I'm teaching you to go with greens and it stabilizes the body, even on accident, you're still gonna be helping yourself. Okay, that's what I want you to see. It's not hard. It's not, people like to make, you know, holistic health very hard and they think it's very hard to understand, but it's not, it's the easiest to understand. It really is. Okay, so with you just throwing that out, you already have one vegetable that you know will help with your hypertension by relaxing the blood vessels, okay? Making it easier for the uh, blood to flow. Now let's look and put celery. Let's do celery. Now this is just, again, just a, throwing this out there, see what sticks. First, first uh, title of the article, celery may help bring your high blood pressure down. Is celery good for high blood pressure? This is the Cleveland Clinic. This is a good uh, resource. Look, it relaxes the tissues of the artery walls to increase blood flow and reduce blood pressure. You just threw that out there, Adrian. You just threw that out there. This is what I'm saying. If you go with the greens, it stabilizes the body. Yes, all of the vegetables, as you go and you continue to work through this, you will realize, oh, I know that celery does this and I know that beet greens does this, but in the beginning, without knowing any information, the formulas that I'm giving you, you plug, just plug, plug what you want to eat into them. That's all I'm saying. Okay. What else did you put there? You put, um, kale. Let's look at kale. To be honest, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have paired them together. <laughs> Most people wouldn't pair that together, right? They were like, I'm gonna go with some strawberries, throw some strawberries in there. But no, if you throw the strawberries in there, that's gonna cause stress on the body. So that's gonna actually spike your blood pressure. And people think I'm crazy when I'm like, oh my God, don't tell people what to do. I'm gonna mix my, you don't even know what you're talking about. Okay, so moving forward, all 28 of us, we know what we're talking about because we want the body to work in synergy. When I say don't mix fruits and vegetables together, it's because Food is supposed to be a healing modality for the body. If we intermix these things, it puts stress on the body. That totally defeats the purpose. So with you just putting that mix together, you already know that the beet greens and the celery, that's a whole high blood pressure detox right there. You can drink that 10 days in a row and I bet you will see some differences. You know, if you follow the rest of the formulas that I'm giving you, um, as far as, you know, meal pairing and eating at the correct times, your blood pressure will come down normally if you follow that for 10 days, right? So I just wanted to do that quick example to show you all how easy it really is. It's really not that hard. Okay. Um, let me go back to the... Okay. So... Yes, you want to start with cleansing the colon first. We got to make sure the colon is as clean as possible so that when we do move on to, you know, advancing to herbs and supplements that the body can actually utilize them in the proper way. Uh, so natural cleansing formula, again, high fiber fruits or vegetables. You pick the fruits or vegetables based on what you want to do. All of us here said that we want to stabilize the body based on the health issues that you guys put in the comments. You want to stabilize the body. If somebody would have said, I want to lose 100 pounds, I would have told them to go with fruit, okay? Um, but because we want to stabilize the body, we want to go with vegetables, high-fiber vegetables. Um, then we're going to do the, the water. Make sure you're also incorporating 
antioxidants and electrolytes. If you're gonna be drinking a gallon of water a day, and electrolytes and antioxidants are found in berries, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries. Okay, and then make sure you're doing the enema, right? That's very basic, simple detox that will still yield you phenomenal results. All right, so cleansing and detoxing for children. You can't really detox a child for 24 hours because <laughs> they're going to be fed up with it. And you don't want to create a negative emotion that they have towards detoxing, right? So for children, you may just want to have them detox until 12. That's what I do with my children. Um, I only in detoxing, remember, it's only fruits or vegetable juices, all right? So I usually give my children fruit juices that I make um, in the morning time, and that's their detox. So I have them blend up, up colon drinks so guess what i'm going with high fiber fruits in the morning or i let them detox with the drink i create a high fiber drink with fruit or i create a high fiber fruit bowl okay high fiber fruit bowl and then at 12 o'clock be ready to give them either a high protein or high carb meal okay carbs and proteins provide the body with energy so if you've been detoxing your child you know from the time they woke up you're giving them high fiber drinks um, you're giving them high fiber fruit bowls, you know, enough. And don't, don't limit them. If they want more fruit, give them as much fruit as they'll eat. That's great for them. Rehydrate the body because a lot of children don't like to drink water, okay? Um, or at least children that are coming off of sugar or children that eat sugar regularly or drink regular juice, they usually don't like to drink water, okay? So give them as much fruit. I don't care if they want to eat eight oranges in the morning time. Let them eat it. Because not only is that they uh, detoxing the colon because it's high fiber, but they're also hydrating the body. So I don't never stop the children from eating the fruit, okay? Give them as much as they want in the morning time. They'll start to move their bowels more regularly. With children, you will want to just focus on the colon with them. So high fiber fruits, high fiber vegetable bowls or fruit bowls, whichever your child would like um, or will uh, give less of a battle for you. Uh, give that to them in the morning time. And then use the meal pairing. If you uh, start to follow these rules earlier, it's more likely that they will adopt them into their adulthood and they'll see less health problems as they grow older, you know, especially as it can, uh, relates to the colon. All right, so for children, just focus on detoxing maybe from the time they wake up to noon and then right at noon, you can give them either a high protein or a high, um, a high fat, sorry, not fat, high carbohydrate meal as soon as they wake, um, as soon as 12 o'clock hits. What do you want it to be, okay? Um, even my, even Prince right here, Prince is one years old. He detoxes in the morning time as well. And that just basically means I give him high fiber fruit in the morning time. All of my children, they know the game. 12 o'clock, they ready for their food though. They're ready for their solid food. Okay. Um, once they get about, you know, I would say 16 to 18, then they can start looking into uh, full day cleanses, you know, maybe one to three days. Uh, maybe they'll be able to handle it. Because they have a high energy output, you don't want to limit their, their amount of um, calories that they get per day. Okay, you don't want them to be in a deficit. So just make sure you're giving them the protein, carbs, and fats uh, per day. Um, when it comes to how much does a child need, you can literally look online, like how much protein. I believe from age one to three, it is about 10 grams protein, 10 grams, eight to 10 grams. Um, from uh, four to like nine, it's about 12 to 20 grams of protein. Um, and then 15 to 18, we're looking about 30 grams protein. Um, and again, for adults are 18 and up, you wanna do uh, your weight times 0.32, it tells you how much in grams you wanna eat for uh, protein per day. Okay, so then, you know, we talked about Meal pairing, which teaches you how to construct the actual meals, okay? How to put your meal together. We talked about the circadian rhythm, which tells you how to organize your meals. And now we're gonna talk about 70-20-10 rule, which tells you how much of each to put. You know, a lot of people talk about um, portion control. This is how you basically do that. So a healthy person, a normal healthy person should be on a 2,000 calorie diet per day. Okay, 70% of your calories should come from carbohydrates because carbohydrates supply the body with energy. It helps you to complete your day-to-day -day ta task. So that's about 1,400 calories 
per day should come from carbohydrates. And I know you probably like, oh my God, I want to lose weight. I want to stay away from the carbs. I'm not talking about white bread. I'm not talking about um, pita wraps and all that. I'm talking about healthy carbs, okay? Nutrient dense carbs, such as quinoa, as I told you all, quinoa, okay? Such as yams, nutrient dense, okay? High in minerals, right? Not, <laughs> not a, what, what's the name of the place? Ch Chipotle, Chick-fil-A carbs. I'm not talking about those carbs. Okay, I'm talking about healthy carbs. Carbs from spelt. Instead of wheat, you can use spelt. Instead of white, you can use spelt. Amaranth. Stop saying it. Mm -hmm. Okay. 20% um, of your carbs for the day should come from protein. Sorry, 20% of your calories for the day should come from protein. That's about 400 calories per day should come from protein. 10% or 200 calories should come from fat, okay? So now we know because we follow meal pairing, we don't put carbs, protein, and fat all on one plate. That's gonna cause you to feel fatigued, that's gonna cause ga gas, bloating, we don't put all that on one plate, okay? We, we take this information, we use it to construct our meals, we use the meal pairing, and then we use the circadian rhythm to organize our meals. But we got to just make sure our total meal plan for the day or for the week consists of 70% carbs, 20% protein, or 10% fat. Okay, healthy fats like chia, flaxseed, avocado, those are the, you know, easiest to find. Okay, but fat is also in nuts. Fat is also in seeds. And we just saw fat is also in uh, beans and legumes. Okay, so that help that is added towards the actual uh, quota. I want to briefly talk about gaining weight as a vegan. I don't know if anybody here wants to gain weight, but I'm going to go over this. Um, if you're gaining weight, I'm sorry, if you want to gain weight and you're not gaining weight, it's most likely because you're in a calorie deficit every day. Uh, so that means you're basically using most of your calories as energy and it's not helping you to build healthy weight. So you basically want to be on a 3,500 calorie diet um, a lot of people that struggle with gaining weight is usually because they don't eat a lot, all right? They move a lot, but they don't eat a lot. So that puts them in a calorie deficit. Uh, so 70% of the calories should come from carbs. That's about 2,400 carbs. 20%, 700 calories should come from protein. 10% or 350 calories should come from fat. And if you have a hard time eating physical meals, I'd rather you use liquids, all right? So you use the meal pairing again to create your weight gain shapes, okay? So you can put peanut butter in a green smoothie, but not in a fruit smoothie, no. Okay, that's improper food pairing that causes twists and uh, little issues with the colon, okay, over time, right? So you would wanna put nuts and seeds in your green smoothies. It ain't gonna taste the best, but we're doing this for nutrient purposes, not for taste, right? Um, and work, work your way up to it. I'm not saying you're going to wake up tomorrow and be able to eat 3,500 calories. That's going to be a lot, especially if you're eating a calorie deficit every day or you're in calorie deficit. So start with the liquids, work your way up to 3,500 calories per day, okay? You can do that for about 30 to 60 days. That should bring you to your, your healthy weight or the weight that you should be for your height, okay? Recipes for children. Again, I'm going to teach you guys formulas instead of teaching you all recipes because just like I just showed you all, Hey, son, when I teach you all formulas, you will have this information for a lifetime. It's not my idea for y'all to keep having to come back to me and be like, what's another recipe? What's another recipe? I'm tired of this. No, I want you all to know the formulas so that you can be self-sufficient. Okay, so recipes for children. The easiest way to create recipes for children is just find replacements. That, that was how I was able to transition my children to veganism, plant-based, and get them to actually like it. I just found replacements for what they already eat. All children eat chicken tenders, right? Chicken nuggets. So how can I replace that? Well, we use the TNT method. TNT stands for taste and texture. Taste and texture. If you can replace the taste, meaning the seasoning, and you can find a vegetable that also has a similar texture to the food that they like, they'll love it. It's not about eating the chicken. It's about the way the chicken tastes. So if I can find a mushroom, like everybody knows this by now, Oyster mushrooms have a similar texture to chicken. That's why it works, right? And then I just cook it 
and prepare it so that it tastes like chicken. Same thing with any other recipe. You're replacing the taste and you're replacing the texture. Maybe I can help you all out. Drop some recipes that you love that maybe I can veganize on the spot for you. I won't tell you the whole recipe, but I can tell you like what vegetable may replace the taste and what seasonings can replace um, the taste and what vegetable can replace the texture. Any recipes that you guys like? Okay, cube steak. My mom used to make some cube steak. I used to like cube steak too. Um, but I, again, steak has a more chewy texture. So you can go for uh, the king oyster mushrooms. Um, that's what I use. Now, I don't make it like the shape of steak. I will shred it because it still gives me that consistency. And then I go with the seasoning. So what do people put on steak, right? They get, there's uh, at Whole Foods, they have a chemical-free browning. They have chemical-free A1 sauce. I just prepare it like steak. You know how you would do the steak. You would marinate it. I would marinate the mushroom. I would shred the mushroom first. I would shred the mushroom. Now marinate it in the um, either uh, what is it called? Uh, what's the name of that? I haven't used it in so long. Um, liquid smoke, I believe it's called liquid smoke. I would marinate it in liquid smoke. I would marinate it in the chemical free A1 steak sauce. I would marinate it in the um, the chemical free browning seasoning. Um, and I'll even buy chemical free steak seasoning from the owls. Okay, and I'll marinate the mushrooms in that for about 15, 20 minutes. Um, then I'll saute it in some avocado oil. Um, you know, you can cook the peppers and the mushrooms in the uh, same saute pan. And I got me some cube steak. Now it's not obviously steak, but I'm replacing the taste and I'm replacing the texture. So at the end of the meal, I'm like, mm, that was kind of good. Okay, fried fish. I've always liked to use banana blossoms for that. You can find banana blossoms um, in Whole Foods. You can also find banana blossoms at uh, Oriental Markets um, that has a great texture, similar texture to uh, fried fish, and then I just batter it the same way, All right? So how we use the fish fry, I'll go get a uh, chemical-free fish fry. Remember, you gotta read the ingredients. The front is for entertainment, the back is for education. So I'll read the ingredients of the fish fry and I follow the same methods of preparing it, okay? And then I'll um, prepare it that way. And your children will start to like it. They're like, okay, it don't taste exactly the same, but I can do it. I can deal with this, right? I see somebody says shrimp Alfredo. So with Alfredo, we're replacing the taste, right? Mostly because the texture, you can still use noodles. Um, now for shrimp, a lot of people like to use Kojak, but you got to kind of, it's an actual, um, Kojak is a type of flour, uh, but you got to be real skillful to do that. But even if you just did the Alfredo sauce, right? What does Alfredo take? Heavy cream. So you can get coconut cream, right? You can use coconut cream, you can use coconut milk. You can even use half and half uh, from made from cashew milk. And it tastes good. I actually have a recipe for that. Um, so you can use that. You're replacing the texture, you're replacing the taste. So you have to look for things that replace that. What kind of oil to fry plantains? Um, anytime you're frying, you want to opt for healthier oils, such as avocado oil, Again, you know, you got to know what you're cooking with. So a lot of people use canola oil, peanut oil. What are healthy alternatives to that? We have avocado oil. We have grapeseed oil. Those are the two that I usually use. <laughs> what are the best foods for having six-pack abs? You tell me, Carol. I don't know if you were here for all of that. Anybody can tell Carol what might be the best for six-pack abs based on the formulas that I told you all? What is Carol trying to... Ah, there you go. Yes, yes, yes. I think that says Joyce, right? Based on what we told you, or what we, what we talked about earlier, high fiber fruit, yes, right? Carol wants six pack abs. Carol wants the body to perform a action. So whenever we want the body to perform an action, now you're leaning towards a detox in the morning time. We need a detox in the morning time using high fiber fruits. Absolutely. Come on, let me just let me let me let me go to Google real quick. Let me see what I can just throw something out there and see what it says. This is so funny. <laughs> it just says do more exercise. <laughs> Stop eating processed food. I, I believe we know that, right? Uh, but if you're detoxing, you're not eating processed food. So you want to go with, again, the high fiber fruits, you want to detox. So I'm guessing you need to lose weight, right? So you can do the colon detox, but you're going to be more focused on high fiber fruits. That's going to have your stomach to reduce the inflammation, 
right? To reduce the inflammation in the body. That's an action. That's having the body perform an action. So you will go with the high fiber fruits. Good job, everybody. I think you said, I think really, I think watermelon will help me doing the summer. Yes, watermelon is very, very good and high in fiber and hydration, which is going to flush the body. Okay, let me share the screen so we can finish this. Okay, uh, so we talked about the TNT methods for meal replacement. You want to wean them off. Don't just say, you know, you wake up in the morning and say, we're going to eat healthy for the rest of our lives. They're going to cry, they're going to scream, they're going to shout, and they're going to be happy. So don't do that, especially if you've already given them sugar. You want to wean them, wean them off of the bad eating. So that means give them something good with something bad. Give them something good with something bad. If they drink a herbal tea in the morning, give them a, a smoothie or something. Like whatever it is for you and what you're uh, – comfortable with doing, give them something good with something bad. You have to do it. And you start to wean them off of it, especially if children are drinking a lot of juice, okay? Juice actually leads to kidney issues, right? Because it's so concentrated, right? It's so concentrated, it has a lot of uh, added sugars, okay? Even if you juice the juice yourself, it's still concentrated because you remove the fiber, right? It's still concentrated. You're concentrating the fruit to get the juice. So you want to dilute your juices with water. Right, so if they're drinking straight apple juice from um, the store, right, you want to give them maybe 50%, or let's say the first day you do 80%, 20% water, 80% juice, 20% water. Then the next week you'll do 50% water, 50% juice. Then the week after that, you do 30, you know, you work your way down. All right, and then before you know it, they're going to be drinking water. That's what I actually had to do when I first went vegan. This is some things that I started to implement with my children. Even when I started to give them herbs, they don't like the way the herbal teas taste. So guess what I used to do? I used to give, I said, you drink this whole cup of herbal tea, I'm gonna give you one vegan marshmallow. And that just made them so happy. They would drink it and they got their vegan marshmallow at the end of it. Now we've gotten to the point where I don't have to give them you know, toxic foods. I will actually say, drink this herbal tea, I give you a movie night tonight with us, right? So you can do what works for your family and wherever you all are in your journey, but you have to wean them off of it because the one thing, I forgot to put the aging method, but let's just say weaning method. Uh, one thing you don't want to do is have them build a negative relationship with healthy foods. And how you build a negative relationship with healthy foods is by making somebody do it. Like, oh my God, mom is making me eat this. You know, they start to despise it. Uh, set boundaries. Okay, that's another thing that I talked about where you, um, you know, have them, you know, eat something healthy and they get a reward. It's just like a reward system. If they uphold the boundary, if you guys eat all of your fruit smoothies this week, every morning without crying, on Saturday, we're going to go to XYZ, whatever works for you. On Saturday or Sunday, we're going to do this or we're going to do that. Whatever works for your um, household, do it. It becomes a healthy bond with healthy foods. Okay, you're building childhood memories around healthy foods. We've done enough building childhood memories around toxic foods. Every birthday party we go to, every graduation we eat toxic foods. We're building healthy memories around toxic foods. Now you wanna build healthy memories around healthy foods. That's pretty much what we're doing. Educate them, read labels with them. Literally go to, like, you know, I used to go to the grocery store, my children take hours, but we used to read labels and they know what high blood pressure is. They know what diabetes is. They know what these things are. Right, don't sugarcoat it. Tell them education is key. Right, what if we knew the things that we're talking about now when we were children? We probably been further along in our whole journey. So, help them out, let them know what it is, let them know what they're reading. Tell them to read something that's really, really fun with uh, school age children, you know, fourth, third, fifth graders, and they know how to read. And you give them a label to read, and they can't pronounce it. If you can't pronounce it, you don't need to eat it, or you need to at least research it and see what it really is, right? Do a treasure hunt with them where they read. Like, make it fun for them, you know, um, to educate them. And, of course, if you're implementing this for your children, you make sure you get yourself right, okay? Make sure you get yourself right. You're going to be the best example, even if they don't even like it. They're going to remember you as mom and dad taking care of yourself, and they learn by what they see. So that's the easiest way is to get children on board, okay? When it comes to the recipes, don't overthink it. What do they like to eat, okay? 
you're going to be getting their minerals in through the detox in the morning time. Okay, just make sure their meals are paired right and give them what they like to eat. And grow with them. Start with them. We have to start as children ourselves, eating certain things. I can't drink certain teas and I like the taste. Children the same way, right? So grow with them over time. We're doing this for the long term. Don't wake up tomorrow and be like, we're doing all herbal teas, all fruit bowls. This house better not have another Oreo in it. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that, okay? Grow with them. We're in this for the long haul, all right? So where I am with my children today, we was nowhere near this last year. Hey, where I am with my children today, we was nowhere near this five years ago. So you grow with them and you help them to learn and you continue to learn to grow as well. You're irritable because you're lacking nutrients. Okay, if you notice your children are irritable or you yourself are irritable, start with rehydration, which is really, really important um, when it comes to what you give them for their detoxes. Remember I told you about the fruits in the morning time for them? You gotta make sure they're hydrated. Okay, it helps you get through the day faster. Children are usually... Um, deficient in when they're irritable and parents as well deficient in b vitamins okay so you got to keep you a b complex herb or a b complex supplement that is made from herbs okay b complex vitamin d vitamin e and healthy fats okay that'll help you a lot with the temper tantrums and things like that i don't know how old your children are uh but that'll help with you know the terrible twos as they call it all right so how to create 30 minute meals you still want to use, you're still going to use the meal pairing, but don't overdo it. For 30 minute meals, no more than two foods. So if you're doing beans and quinoa, beans and quinoa it is. Okay? This is simple. There's a laundry list of 30 minute meals, but the basic formula is no more than two foods, and you might have to eat 30 minute meals for a whole week. But the way that you make sure you're getting all of your minerals is you make sure you eat complete nutrients. Beans, legumes, nuts, and seeds are all complete nutrients. What do you mean by that? They all contain protein, fats, and carbohydrates, which is our macronutrients, as people like to say. Okay, so if you eat enough complete nutrients, okay, you're going to most likely get all of the um, micronutrients that you need daily, and you're going to meet your protein needs. Okay, so lean more towards complete nutrients. Stay away from the processed foods. Okay, the white flour, the pancakes, all these other foods that are processed are nutrient deficient. You want to eat more complete nutrients versus nutrient deficient. If you, if you know nothing and you just fill your diet up with more complete nutrients versus uh, nutrient deficient foods, you're going to be getting all the micronutrients that you need. Um, when you're on the go, always go with greens. If you don't know, go with greens. Go with greens. You can never lose. Okay, you can never lose with greens because they're going to have the macro and the micronutrients that you need when you pair them with your complete nutrient foods. Okay, so anytime that I'm on the go, I'm going with two things. I go, I go when I need a 30 minute meal, I'm going with lentils, chickpeas, kidney beans, paired with quinoa, steamed kale, or steamed collard greens. I, that's a whole nutrient-dense meal right there. Okay, so that's the easiest way to keep yourself going. So keep those in your fridge. Keep those in your pantry, okay? Keep those type of beans, those nutrient-dense beans. The most nutrient-dense beans are uh, garbanzo beans, also known as chickpeas, uh, lentils, um, and kidney beans, okay? All right, so now we're gonna wrap it up for a Q&A. Oh, I still have some more. Easy vegan snacks, okay? This is very, very, very easy. Um, I don't really buy anything that's processed um, as far as like packed snacks. Uh, I usually just give, why did I have this typo? Let's say anything, anything high fiber. Children do not get enough fiber. Start tracking their bowel movements, okay? Anything high in fiber is a good snack. Anything high in fiber, hydrating, high in antioxidants, and easily digestible, okay? Snacks, the snacking culture is a Western thing, okay? That's a Western mindset. We should not be eating snacks in between meals, okay? Because it throws off our circadian rhythm, right? So if you want to eat snacks, it got to be high fiber, easy to, easy to digest, 
high antioxidants and um, high water content. Okay, that's how your snacks should be. Don't you know get the processed foods because guess what? They're low in fiber, low in antioxidants, and hard to digest, causing traffic jams basically in our intestines. So whenever you're going for a snack, you know, oh, I need something. Don't go to the vending machine and get the chips because guess what? It's going to make a traffic jam in your colon, right? You want to go with something. If you got a snack, you got to go with something that's high fiber, high water content, high antioxidants, and easily to di easily uh, digestible. Even if you can't find something that has high antioxidants, at least get the high fiber, high water content, and easy to digest. Okay, that's how you make your snacks. And if you want to find a snack. That's what you. Should, that's the criteria you should follow. Okay, right. So now we're gonna do Q and A. Hopefully you all enjoy the meal prep part one. I'm gonna scroll up and read as many. Um, I got about 15 minutes. I'm gonna read as many questions as I can. To clean out kidneys, should you avoid bananas, tomatoes, and potatoes? Yes, I highly recommend it. Now. I believe you went into what kind of, whenever you want to, you know, when just to be easy, whenever you want to, you know, rejuvenate the kidneys, you want to go with things that have a high water content. Okay. So starchy vegetables usually dehydrate the body and make the body more acidic. The kidneys are an alkaline organ. So you want to go with alkaline fruits and vegetables, high water content. Okay. That's going to be your base of the meal plan. Can we use berries with acid reflux? I would rather you do greens, okay? Do the greens for at least seven to 10 days. Do the greens seven to 10 days, you know, going hard every morning, do up to four detox drinks with your greens. That should help you to get the acid reflux under control, okay? Uh, because we need to stabilize the body. So will this help with restless leg syndrome? What are you asking? Will what help that restless leg syndrome? Okay, I see somebody put a weight loss, berries, apples, pears, detox drink. Sounds good. Sounds good. What do you need to lose weight? Should you stable as well? Okay, should you stabilize first, then work on losing weight? So the good thing about it is, um, Alexis, can you tell me what health issue you have? So if you're having a health issue that you need to stabilize the body, stabilize the body first. You want to lose weight by default if you, you know, do more detoxing versus eating um, carbs, fats, and protein, that makes sense. Because basically what the detox is going to do is help you to lose waste. That's what you want to lose. You want to lose the waste. Okay? What do you usually give them for protein, carbs, and fats? We bean people over here. We, re we eat beans all day. We just had some butter beans and chickpeas earlier. So that's usually our carbs, proteins, and fats. We don't really... One thing about it, you don't want to have like 30 different foods a part of your diet. I'd rather you have 30 different herbs, but you eat the same type of foods because your body knows what to expect. Okay, if you switch every single day and you got, you know, four different proteins, you know, every single day that you introduce, it, it gets hectic with the body. Okay, the body, re, you know, constantly has to readjust. So we eat the same foods all the time. All right, we eat the same foods such as chickpeas. I make chickpeas like 30 different ways. We got... <laughs> we got curry chickpeas, then we got stewed chickpeas, then we got chickpea tuna. Like we've been making all types of things with the same type of bean, okay? So, or with legume. So you do the same thing, right? Um, I'd rather you get more creative with the herbs and the supplements. Um, as far as carbs, we only eat spelt um, as our main source of carbohydrate. Um, spelt, we do uh, quinoa. Um, I also eat for breakfast. We do, I, I post it on my profile sometimes the quinoa rice and shine. Like, I don't change what I eat too much. Um, as fats, we use avocado. That's our main source of our fat right now, is avocado. Tasting chicken, curry chicken. Okay, I think that'll be killer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a food. 
Okay, for hyperpigmentation, should I also go with fruits? Okay, let me ask you this. Are you trying to stabilize the body or get the body to perform an action? What do you think? What do you guys think? Is that stabilizing the body to remove dark space spots? Uh, is that stabilizing the body or is that getting the body to perform an action? I can understand why that might be tricky. I agree with you. Stabilize, absolutely. Perform an action. Now I understand why you could say performing an action, right? Because the action actually was the body uh, producing acne, which is what I think caused the hyperpigmentation, right? But we want to stabilize the body because if the body had acne, we need to be removing toxins, right? So we're stabilizing the body. It's still an action, but we're stabilizing the body, okay? Does that make sense? Okay. When it comes, when I, usually actions have to do with removing fat, losing weight, okay? If there's toxins in the body that causes the body to commit an action, such as have an inflammation response, such as acne, we need to stabilize the body, okay? So yes, you guys are right, stabilization, absolutely. Yeah, so you would go with um, hydration and stabilizing the body with greens. Now, you can still, don't get me wrong, you can still get great results with fruits, but if you, if you purchase the ancient skincare detox, you will notice that that is mostly greens. There's not many fruits in the ancient skincare detox versus the 10-day detox, which is focused on removing waste from the colon. The 10-day detox, I have mostly fruits, but the ancient skincare is mostly vegetables because we're stabilizing the body, right? Because acne is an inflammation response. So we need to stabilize the body, such as hyperpigmentation, um, such as um, high blood pressure. Those are all inflammation in the body. Right. What about bone issues such as arthritis? So arthritis is inflammation, right? So we want to stabilize the body. And yes, we will go with vegetables. <laughs> Carol, I'm not about to stand so you can see my vegan physique. <laughs> That's so funny. You missed the, I still have the beginning. I'm going through this with my 18 year old getting her ready for college campus living. What's, what's your struggles? Tell me your struggles with the um, college. That's so funny. We actually worked with a, a college student with the vegan bikes guy. That's a, she's transitioning to college as well. So if you don't know, we're going to be launching the Surviving Vegan Kids page on Instagram. So I would definitely have her create more content on transitioning into college lifestyle. Are dates a good snack? Absolutely. Dates are a good snack and they're high in fiber. Not a lot of water, but they're high in fiber. Um, I would avoid them though if you have, you know, glucose issues uh, or diabetes. But they ultimately, like if your child eats candy, dates is definitely the alternative for them. Okay. How can I help my restless leg syndrome? Okay, so I wish there was like, you know, just a very simple answer. But what I want you to know is restless leg syndrome is not an illness, right? Restless leg syndrome is a symptom of an illness. So I need to know what's causing the restless leg syndrome. There's usually a uh, nervous system issue. Okay, so we want to, now this is more complicated than just, uh, you know, stabilizing the body or making the body perform an action. But usually, restless leg syndrome is because of a nervous system issue. So we want to look into, number one, building a meal plan that stabilizes the body, but then on top of that, you want to take herbs and supplements that correct the issue. Uh, so we're looking into things such as motherwort. Uh, we're looking into things such as red clover. Um, we're looking into black cohosh, okay, for nervous system. We want to use herbs that are good for nervous system. So for you as the formula, you will want to first build a meal plan that stabilizes the body and then use herbs and supplements that are good for the nervous system, okay? So you can plug in which herbs that you want to use into that formula. I have Fatty Gilbert when I was pregnant. Does the chickpea flour really taste like eggs? No, it doesn't. It's not eggs, it's just a replacement. Um, but I would, I could not even live without chickpea flour as my egg replacement because it's so good. It does not taste like eggs because it's not eggs, but uh, it's about as close as you're gonna get. It really is. 
I gave my son dates last week because he couldn't go to the bathroom. I gave him five days and a few hours later he went to the bathroom. Dates fit for the win with me. Yes, I already know, sis. I think like like a handful of dates has like 10 grams of uh, fiber. So that's all he needed. And that's what I'm saying. You want to continue to give them that fiber in the morning, they're going to go regularly. Give them that fiber and hydration. The high fiber fruits is already going to give them hydration, such as the tangerines, oranges. I don't know if children eat grapefruits, but strawberries, things like that. That's going to give them the hydration and the fiber. You can't beat that. You want to get them on a regimen. You want to even train your bowels and your children bowels. All right, so every day you should be going at the same time. You could train your bowels by just literally like if you wake up at 6 a.m., go sit on the toilet at 8 o'clock and focus and meditate. You will start like a week later, you'll be able to train your bowels to uh, actually go at that time. What about just eggs? How do you feel about that? It's a good transition food, but it's not where I would stay. Put it like that. What about autoimmune issues such as hepatitis or even HIV? Would eating more veggies help also? No, it would not help. It would not take away. I mean, it would help. Let me take it back. It would help because you will feel healthier, but it would not. I, I'm guessing you're asking me, would it reverse the problem? No, it would not reverse the problem. Only supplements and herbs can reverse the problem. What foods can I take to reduce herpes outbreaks? So you, don't, you want to eat foods that prevent inflammation in the body, okay? But that is a way more complex. Shout out to everybody that was in the Survivor Vegan Academy. It's coming back in um, January. That's a way more complex because we're dealing with a virus, right? It's not just, uh, you know, an inflammation response in the body. We're actually dealing with the outside pathogen is now a part of the body. So that's way more complex and we would not be able to cover that in this. But the short answer is you can use stabilizing vegetables to you know manage the symptoms but it would not remove the virus okay you would need supplements and herbs for that so good supplements are uh, good herbs are echinacea poridiaco those are good herbs for that specific issue okay so okay i see one last question is textured vegetable protein okay i don't know what that is I've heard of it because they call it TVP, but I don't know what it's made from. It depends on what it's made from. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Okay, soy protein. So I don't recommend you eat soy because it can cause um, an overgrowth of fibroids. Okay, it can lead to fibroids depending on how much you eat and the actual, um, the, uh, the source of the soy, okay? A lot of soy is grown with GMO, so I personally don't eat soy. Uh, and I know people that have had uh, growths of cysts and fibroids from eating soy. So I personally wouldn't, okay? But peace, love, and light, family. I love you all so much. Oh, I see a few more questions. I'm sorry, y'all. I'll see them. Any recommendations on excess hair growth? Is my body too acidic? That where's the hair growing? Depends on where the hair is growing. Okay, but something is either something in the body is deteriorating. Okay, because hair protects the body. So if there's overgrowth of hair, then that means the body is trying to protect itself. I work out daily and need more more fruit in the a.m. after workout. What do you recommend? Um, so if you're going to be working out in the morning time, you know it's best to work out in the afternoon because Working out is an acidic, is an acidic movement, um, the breaking down and building up the tissue, the muscle. So you want to, you know, try to work out in the afternoon, but if you can't, you can use bananas and before the workout, and then you rehydrate right after the workout with coconut water. Um, and then like 30 minutes later, you can have a high protein meal. Okay. How do I help my daughter? I'm gonna do like two more questions, y'all. How do I help my daughter? Her skin breaks out into scale, keloid rash, but goes away after she has an allergic reaction, which makes her vomit and have diarrhea for 24, 40 hours. So yeah, that's, I don't know what's causing that. We would have to do an assessment to actually figure out what's causing it. Cause me just throwing things out there won't help you if we don't know what's causing it, right? So definitely the body's trying to tell you something. You can start to implement the stabilizing vegetables, but we need to get to the source of what's causing these symptoms. That's, that's, that's the real uh, 
problem right there. Okay, so I'll do one more and let's see. Okay, I think you guys. Is it okay to put peanut butter, banana, and dates in the smoothie? I think you know already, right? Is it okay to put peanut butter, bananas, and dates in the smoothie? No, because peanut butter is protein and you're mixing it with bananas and dates, which are fruits. It's okay to put bananas and dates in the smoothie, but put the peanut butter in your greens, okay? All right, love you all. I will be sending out this replay to you all via email. Um, we're all we are going to do more classes. Um, because I don't have the academy open right now, I am making it my uh, duty to do classes with you all. Um, so we'll be doing another class soon. I love you all so 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 much, and I'm happy that I can help in whatever way you guys will get this recording. I love you, and I will see you all soon. Mwah. Thank you for your support. I truly, truly appreciate it. Love you. Okay, can you y'all y'all get me with these questions? I gotta this is the last question, I promise. Okay, the Academy is a four-week detox program where you learn in more in-depth how to detox, um, how to detox not just your body, but your spirit and your mind. And I also teach you how to create remedies and how to use herbs in a nutshell. That's what it is. But it's four weeks long. Love y'all. Peace, love, and light. Talk soon.